Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's live stream ride. We're going to be doing a special ride today. I'll be doing my first Alp de Zwift. So for anyone who is new to Zwift, Zwift is kind of this online virtual cycling platform. So you can hook up your trainer, your speedometer or power meter or whatever, and you can ride in this virtual world. So today we're going to be riding in Watopia here, and I actually am not sure which route is for the Alp de Zwift specifically because I've never done this before. So let's see which one this is. Road to the Sky, that sounds about right. Let me know if the live stream is working for everybody. Is the audio good? Is the video good? Let me know. Anyway, this looks like the right route. Let's get started. Hey Matt, so good to see the live stream is working. Looks like the game is loading still. Here we are, starting our ride in Watopia. So this is a long hill climb and pretty excited to try this route out. Decided to change my jersey here on Zwift, nice blue jersey. Pretty similar to our jersey here. And anyway, on today's ride, um, let's go ahead and get started with the video. This is a bit of a mix of a celebration and a Q&A. Uh, we just passed 30,000 subscribers on the channel, so thanks to everyone for all the support and joining along and helping subscribe and watching our videos. Uh, pretty exciting to pass this milestone. And yeah, we'll be answering some Q&A questions along the ride. So I'll be cycling along here and feel free to drop in, ask a question, and I'll try and get to it if I can. And hopefully the ride doesn't get too painful so I can still answer your questions. But anyway, join along and feel free to ask a question. There's no specific set topic today, but I did want to make that first announcement about our uh, subscriber milestone. So welcome everyone who's joined. Thanks, Tiny RV Living. And that's a pretty exciting lifestyle. I've been trying to suggest that lifestyle to Tuangchan, where we can live in an RV. She really doesn't like the idea, but I'd like to try it maybe when we go visit the US and travel a bit together. Maybe it's not doable in Asia because of all the hot, humid weather. And hey, Sabino, Sabino Cruz, Cruz brother, Alp de Zwift. JRK, what time is it in Japan right now? It is 9 a.m. And this is actually uh, pretty early for me lately. I've been going to bed late and getting up late, unfortunately, but trying to get out of that cycle. Hopefully this will help with that. Get up early and start working out. <laughs> Zwifted last week, so sweaty. Yeah, I got my, I got my fan ready today. Hopefully the fan's not too noisy and I wasn't prepared the last time I didn't have my fan ready. And thanks, Matt. Again from Tiny RV Living, do you calibrate your trainer in Zwift or something else? Yeah, I use a power meter and I calibrate the power meter every time. So it should work pretty consistently and the power meter is supposedly the most accurate way to hook up to Zwift. So I've got my weight listed and I've got my power meter listed. So I'm actually pretty heavy. A lot of people think I'm really light, but I'm actually 75 kilograms or I'm not sure how much that is in pounds anymore, but it's about 175 pounds. So I'll be, <laughs> I'll be going up this hill nice and slow. Hey Andy, I guess it's evening there over in the US and that side of the world. Thanks Matt. Thanks everyone.
And from Thelonious, yeah, the Zwift data, the graphic data is really beautiful now. It's really pleasant to look at, especially the Watopia world. It's just really beautiful. There's a lot of secret or hidden gems in the course. And I'm pretty excited because I haven't been all the way up this route yet. So we'll be seeing some new sites and it's a nice, it's a nice design right here, right now as we're going along in the base of the mountains. But I have a feeling the scenery will be getting very white in the very near future. <laughs> Bicycle rider, don't envy you in the office right now. My home is my office now. This is the Zwift office. From Sabino, is your area still on lockdown? They just extended California. No, not really. Japan's kind of on a soft lockdown, but no one's really doing anything different. The main thing that is different is... The main thing that is different, though, is the some of the schools are delayed or online right now. Other than that, though, most things are pretty normal here. Uh, but myself and Chuanchan are doing our best to maintain social distancing and not going outside. From Andy, will you ever do bike touring? That was the plan, but with the situation being what it is right now, it's a little bit unnerving and a little bit scary, so we're not sure, but hopefully it eventually gets to a point where it's a bit safer to do that kind of stuff again, but for now, we're trying to stay in a comfortable and familiar and more safe environment as best we can, at least until things settle down a little bit. <laughs> I thought you lived in the sticks anyway. We kind of do. We're actually on the edge of the city, so we have a subway station pretty nearby, so we can actually... We're right on the borderline. If you go a little bit to the east, it's more countryside, but if you go to the west, we're right at the edge of the city, so... It is still a little bit risky where we are. From Tiny RV Living Again, what trainer do you have? I'm actually using a spin bike. I made a video on my channel. If you search spin bike with Zwift, my video will come up and you can see my setup there. I'm thinking to make an updated video soon though, so you guys can see my most updated setup. And hey, Johnny D Wicked, welcome to the chat. It's one of our supporters over on Patreon. Thanks so much for the support. And what else we got? Oh, we're going on some dirt roads right now. That's pretty cool. That's some um, of the new additions here on Zwift lately is they've got the dirt roads. I'm gonna do some bike packing during Golden Week and go to the Noto Peninsula area. Uh, no, we are not going out during Golden Week. There's too many people out during that time. Uh, for people who don't know, Golden Week is like the biggest holiday or biggest traveling holiday in Japan. And it's just a bunch of people moving all over the place. And it just sounds like a recipe for disaster right now. So we will not be going anywhere during that time. We'll be staying in our apartments and I'll probably be zifting. And I generally don't like cycling during that time because there's a lot of cars and people moving around. So it's a bit more dangerous, especially now with the virus and everything. Are you running power pedals? Yes. I just made a video about the my new power meter pedals. So that's what I'm using to connect to Zwift. But you can use any power meter to connect to Zwift. Um, if you have a crank power meter, if you have a wheel power meter, any of those will work. If you have a smart trainer, that of course will work. <laughs> Imagine Zwift gets RTX support. The graphics already look really good for me, but yeah, if they get any better than this and you put it on a large screen TV, I'd imagine that look really nice. Hey Jesse, <laughs> who are you? I'm Cruz. Oh wow, thanks Sabino. 
Thanks for the super chat. Appreciate it. Hello from Colombia. Hey, Juan. Welcome to the chat. Yeah, definitely. We're not in the sticks by any means. Um, but then again, uh, Japan has a mass transit station pretty much no matter where you are. That's one of the great things about living in Japan is everything is connected. So you're never far from a train station. Um, really, even if you're deep in the countryside, there's usually uh, train stations nearby. And from Louis, Luis, Konnichiwa from Brazil. <laughs> Hello from Brazil. From Andy, what's your favorite footwear when bicycle commuting? If I'm, hmm, I have kind of two. If I'm riding my single speed, I actually prefer my flats and tennis, regular tennis shoes. It's just pretty comfy for me. But if I'm riding more seriously, like my mountain bike or road bike or uh, cyclocross bike, I prefer my mountain bike shoes and SPDs just because it's easier to walk. I almost never use road shoes anymore other than uh, when I'm Zwifting or using my power meter pedals. But the mountain bike shoes are pretty great because you can walk more easily. And I'll be making a video about this uh, this upcoming Sunday, so that'll be my next theme. I'll be discussing the differences between road shoes and mountain bike shoes. So be on the lookout for that. Oh man, even with the fan, it's, it's hot in here. <laughs> Thanks, Abito. Hope you guys, you and Chung, stay safe out there. Appreciate it. We're doing our best to... We don't want to take any risks, like... We're trying to stay inside as much as possible. We only go to the grocery store once a week to get essentials. Other than that, we're not really going anywhere. I did a ride, a uh, bicycle ride into the city the other day, and that was just because I had some essential stuff that I needed to do, and I had to go to some locations. But other than that, we're gonna try and stay home as much as possible, stay safe. It's not worth the risk right now. And yeah, hope you guys all stay safe as well, wherever you guys are in the world, stay safe. From Jesse, do you have any jerseys left for sale? Uh, with this jersey, yes, we have two left in size S. Um, I'm in discussion with one person right now, so one of them might be gone, but we have one left in size S. They're uh, race fit, so I'm actually raising or riding with a size S as well, so I'm pretty big. I'm six feet tall and 75 kilograms, and it fits me, but, so if you're interested, there is one S size jersey available and send me an email, tubocruise at gmail.com. The only problem with international shipping, most countries aren't accepting international shipping right now, so it may be difficult to ship if you're outside of Japan. Yep, getting hot in here. I might have to turn the fan on high mode. From Andy, what's the fastest and farthest you've ever ridden? These are two separate answers. The, the fastest was, I mentioned this on one of my last live streams, was when I was riding in California. I was training with one of the five hour energy team pro riders and we rode up Mount Diablo and we were descending and the guy was just descending crazy fast and I was chasing him and when we were descending this mountain it was the fastest speed I ever hit. I don't remember exactly what it was right now but I think it was over it's like 60 between 60 and 70 miles an hour something like that at pretty insane speed I never want to go that speed ever again on a bicycle. For the furthest ride I think my furthest ride was either a, uh, I get confused between miles and kilometers now, but my longest ride in Japan 
was from here in Nagoya all the way to Kyoto, then to Osaka, and then to Hyogo. And that was a pretty long day, uh, a full day of riding. I don't remember the exact distance, but I think it was about 200 kilometers or something like that. So not too long for a single day ride. From JRK, can you live anywhere in Japan without owning a car? Uh, yes and no. If you're relatively near a city, I think you don't need a, a car at all. I lived here my first four years without a car. No problems. I actually enjoyed life without the car. It was really comfortable. So I would say you definitely don't need a car if you're near the regular train stations and buses and stuff like that. And if you get a, a nice bicycle with a basket, you can be fully self-sufficient. But if you live in the deep countryside and there's nothing around you and things are really spread out and there's lots of mountains, then maybe, yeah, you might want to have a car. So this climb seems to be pretty long. There's a it looks like there's different points that you climb to. We're heading towards point number 21 right now, a gradient of 10%. So we're not moving that far. I'm trying to hold the average RPM rotation per minute for cadence. I try to hold around between 80 and 90. That's my average usually. Holding a decent heart rate right now, 145. That's a cool thing. You'll see all this data up in the top left side of the screen. The, the top left is my watts, so that's the amount of energy you're putting out. Holding a 180 watt average right now. And it looks like we're only in the first sector, so that's cool. On the left side of the screen, it shows the different sectors. We're in sector 21, so we got 20 more to go. And you can compare your data for each of these when we do this again. So. Maybe another day I'll do a serious effort up this climb and see how well I can do. From Bicycle Rider, is the insect like noise from Zwift? Yes, the, the game actually includes like nature sounds. So we have some of the bugs coming from the game right now. I imagine as we get up more towards the snow side of the mountain once we climb that high there won't be any more bug sounds but yeah there should be like wind sounds and if you're ri riding by like the ocean or water you'll hear water sounds so that's part of the game let me know if the game sounds are a little bit too loud or distracting I can turn them down if need be From Juan, do you recommend mixing running with some bike or just one of those? It depends on what your goals are. If your goals are to be a really competitive cyclist, then I think running can have some diminishing returns depending on when you do it. So when I was racing more seriously, I would do running as cross training in the off season, but usually if you do running during the main season, it would actually slow you down with cycling, but it depends on what kind of cycling you're doing. So if you're doing more hill climbs, maybe it'll help with your endurance a bit more. But if you're going more for sprinting, then it can actually hurt your performance. But if you're just looking to get in shape and you're not too focused on competition, I would say do both. There's a lot of benefits to running and there's a lot of benefits to cycling. Uh, <laughs> cycling is a lot more enjoyable to me though. Running is a bit more painful, but I think running gets a lot more uh, bang for your buck is the expression. You get a lot more uh, back from just a 30 minute effort, whereas in cycling, you'd have to ride over an hour to get the same returns. So if you're short on time, yeah, definitely go running. If your goal is enjoyment, 
Uh, just ride your bike. Unless you're strange and like running. From Johnny D. Wicked. Have you watched any new or old anime recently? Apparently the outbreak has caused some delays to some shows. Yeah, the good and bad thing about this though is there's always some old anime you haven't seen. As a lot of you guys know, I'm a big anime nerd. So currently, uh, Toonchan and I are watching the latest season of Haikyuu, which is a volleyball anime. And of course, that is just top notch. Some other ones we've watched recently, let me think. Uh, I watched Beastars recently. That was a pretty interesting one. And let's see what else. We haven't been watching too much anime lately, actually. We've been watching uh, more Japanese dramas. We've been watching too much anime lately, so we switched to some regular dramas. And the one that we're watching right now is called Dr. X. It's about a female surgeon who works in uh, some different Japanese hospitals, and it just shows like the, the crap that they have to deal with, with the whole Japanese bureaucratic system, the university system, and all the corruption that goes on. But it's a big comedy because she's this freelance surgeon, and she just is way better than everyone else, but she doesn't care about politics, so a pretty entertaining show. But if anyone has any other uh, anime recommendations right now, let me know. We'll be glad to check them out. Okay, thanks Salonius. Yeah, the, the game sounds are really cool and they it just helps you feel a bit more immersed into the game. From Andy, are you still considering folding bikes? Yes, it is still a consideration. Um, I'm honestly not sure what the right direction to go is right now, but folding bikes seem to be the easiest solution. So when we need to travel, we can easily fit them in a suitcase. And if we're gonna be traveling a lot, it seems to be the smart move, but there seem to be also some disadvantages to folding bikes like you obviously can't get the same level of control. The wheels are a little smaller, so you have to adapt to that. And maybe you can't go as fast as a normal road bike. So it's a, it's a difficult decision to make, but definitely with us moving and everything, it seems to be the easiest solution. But no decision has been made with that yet. From Mark, can you survive in Japan without knowing any words of the Japanese language? Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of Japanese people who are always willing to help you, and especially if you don't know any Japanese, there's a lot of Japanese people looking for opportunities to use their English that they've learned. So I think no matter where you are, you can usually find people who are willing to help. And the one place you might struggle a bit is the countryside, but Generally, as long as you're in a city or someplace, I think you can always find someone to help. And more and more places are preparing English like menus and assistance and stuff like that. So even if you can't speak the language, there's always uh, some phone applications you can use. You can use gestures. There's always a way to get by. And Japanese people are usually pretty nice, so I think it'd be okay. <laughs> yeah, Beastars was a bit of a, a strange anime. Um, I guess my dark humor is coming out a bit, but I don't know. I really enjoyed it. It's had a lot of like satire built into it and dark humor and overall pretty enjoyable. I like those more kind of subtle animes. <laughs> 
How did that guy pass you? Uh, some people go really hard on this climb actually. And I'm not going all out right now as you can see. I'm trying to maintain a pace where I can still talk. But uh, yeah, lots of people use this course as their training course. So you'll see some people blowing by me. Have you talked about Ken Shimura? So, no, this is... Unfortunately, there have been some more famous people that have passed away because of the coronavirus in Japan recently. And he was a famous comedian who unfortunately passed away. And it, it is really unfortunate, but hopefully one good thing about this is people will start to take the coronavirus a bit more seriously. and practice more social distancing and smart precautions because of it. So some unfortunate news here in Japan. Salty dog, prefer riding in the countryside, beautiful and calm, definitely. Countryside rides are the best. Another thing I want to point out in this game that uh, maybe some new people here don't know about, that green circle in the top part of the screen, that is a feather. So in the game you get some bonuses. Sometimes when you cross the checkpoint, it'll spin the dial and you win some sort of prize. Sometimes you get a power up, sometimes you get points. So I'm actually going to use this and this bonus will make me a little bit lighter for a few seconds or something. So it's kind of like a power up. But if you don't use it, then you don't get the bonus from the next gate that you cross. So I'm going to use it now so we can get the next bonus item on the next gate that we cross. <laughs> We're only up to gate 17 right now. So a long way to go. From Andy, will you ever visit Japan again after you move? Definitely. We hope to visit as often as we can, and ideally we'd collaborate it in some way with some sort of a cycling event or maybe our own tour or something. So we're looking into different ways that we can stay connected to Japan and still come back every once in a while. We'd like to come back as often as we can, but who knows what the future will hold. We have to, one important thing that we really have to focus on in the beginning is just creating a budget that we can survive in and making sure we make enough income to survive in that budget. So uh, first things first, we want to get settled in Vietnam and make sure that we have a, a steady income flow coming and we make enough money to pay our bills. And once we secure that, we can hopefully expand and go to some other places, some other nearby countries. And of course, also visit back to Japan uh, whenever possible. <laughs> yeah, the, the guy doing 5 watts per kilogram. There's a couple, there's a lot of really s strong people on Zwift. Uh, there are more pro riders riding on Zwift lately, so some of the numbers are realistic, but there's also a lot of people who will use uh, maybe not the most accurate of of metrics to get on Zwift, they'll use maybe a regular speedometer or some faulty power meter or they won't zero it in properly or they'll modify their weight and say their weight is a lot lower than what it actually is. It's one of the unfortunate things on here but it's, it doesn't really matter if it's just you riding. What other people do shouldn't affect you unless you're racing. Whew. One big difference though for 
riding indoors versus riding outdoors is you sweat a lot more indoors definitely at least I do from Hardy do you ever plan for a trip to India in the near future it's definitely a country that I want to visit at some point I can't really say near future we don't have any plans to go there in the very near future but it is definitely on my radar of a place I'd like to go so I think a lot of our future decisions from now are gonna be reliant on what opportunities come up so whatever makes the most sense financially whatever opportunities maybe come up for partnerships so we're open to anywhere if there's an opportunity to go to India and we can find some sort of sponsor to go there we we'll definitely consider it but I think for now our option is to get settled in Vietnam and wait for whatever opportunities come up and just kind of go so there's no solid plan there's a lot of places we'd like to visit all around Asia and India is definitely a place I've always wanted to go Man, it's getting dark out on the course now. This scenery is really nice though. Check out these houses. This reminds me of when I was visiting Germany for Eurobike last year. Just this kind of scenery. Farms all over the place. And these kinds of buildings. That is beautiful. You don't really see anything like this in Japan. There's no open farms like this, but even in the US, like I lived in Kentucky, there was a lot of open farms like this, but uh, no serious mountains like this. So I imagine this is maybe what more like Switzerland looks like, even though I've only briefly been in Switzerland, but I'd, all, I'd love to ride in this kind of real scenery one day. Beautiful. From Mark, is it possible to retire in Japan for foreigners? One option to look into is buying an abandoned house, the Akia, if retirement is possible. Yeah, we, or I was considering this, the, the Akia, there's a big abandoned house problem in Japan right now, so uh, you can get houses for pretty much free. You do have to pay some other things like to fix the house up usually the houses aren't in livable conditions but uh, definitely it's a good option unfortunately there are some restrictions for living in Japan long term as a foreigner uh, one specifically is the visa so I think if you're really really rich there's a way you can buy your visa to stay in Japan but for normal people you need to get a visa on the normal routes so that means uh, to get permanent residency in Japan, you have to work and live in Japan for 10 years, and then you can apply. So once you get that visa, I think you could stay in Japan and potentially retire there. But the problem is, if you don't have that permanent visa yet, you'd technically have to work for 10 years. Uh, so even if you're, you have a decent amount of money, you have all the savings you need, you would uh, potentially need to work some kind of job like some teaching job or something or some easy job uh, for a couple years before you can secure that visa but again I'm not sure of the if you're super rich method uh, maybe that doesn't even exist but at the very least you'd need to work 10 years and stay in Japan for 10 years to get your permanent residency but once you get the permanent residency yeah you can totally retire here I think it's more difficult for foreigners that aren't married to Japanese uh, which is my situation so I know a lot of people here that are married to Japanese people and because of that there's just so many benefits and 
yeah, it's just, it's a lot harder when you're not married to a Japanese person or have a Japanese partner. But it is possible if you put in the time. From JRK, no wind chill factor to cool you down. Now, I've got my fan on, but it's not enough right now. From Cameron, stay awesome. Thanks, man. From Andres, what is your Zwift setup? I'm using a spin bike. So check out my other video, how to use a spin bike on Zwift, and you'll see my exact setup. I'll make an updated video here on the channel, maybe next week or so, uh, so you can see my current setup, what I'm using. But I'm using a basically a spin bike with some power meter pedals. From Snuggles, I have a little fan in front of my bike trainer. Yeah, I've got a, a decent sized fan, but <laughs> it is it is not enough right now. I've got it on medium mode. Maybe I need to switch it to high. Uh, I might get off and switch that real quick. Sorry, Cameron, I just answered that actually about if we're gonna be removing or returning to Japan after Vietnam. So short answer is yeah, whenever there's an opportunity, we'll come back. If you want the full answer, you can maybe check back in the video a few minutes. From Eugenio, why did you stop racing? I actually made a full other video about this as well. So if you search like Tubal Cruise, uh, why I quit racing, you can get the full story, the full answer. There were a couple, I'll uh, simplify it though. <laughs> there were a couple uh, different reasons and ultimately one of the biggest reasons was I decided that I wanted some other, uh, I had some other goals that I wanted to focus my energy on and I'm kind of the kind of person who likes to focus all of his energy in one thing. So when I was focused on cycling, I was locked in, focused on just cycling and that was my primary goal. But I eventually had some other goals in life. I was focusing on learning Japanese and um, yeah, becoming as fluent as I could. And it was really hard to mix the two. You couldn't, uh, they didn't really mix well together. So that was one reason. And another reason was uh, political reasons. Uh, even though it is cycling, it's a sport, but uh, many people who've gotten to a serious level in sports know that a big factor in it is political, unfortunately. And I was getting a little tired of the political games in the cycling world, uh, trying to find a, a good team, a high level team, but a lot of it unfortunately came down to connections and uh, I was getting sick and tired of seeing people who I would consistently beat end up getting better contracts than me. So it's a mix of frustrations and also uh, wanting a more uh, balance with my life, being able to focus on other things, enjoy a more normal kind of life. And those are some of the big reasons why I stopped racing. And now, uh, fortunately, I've learned to enjoy just riding bikes for the sake of riding bikes and it's definitely a lot more enjoyable now. Sometimes the unfortunate thing with racing is you can become a bit too serious with it. And from Farshid, I love your Taiwan videos. I hope you do more of those. Oh, thanks man. That's one of my favorite series, the Taiwan trip. I love the cycling there and that's another country we definitely plan on going back to uh, very often, as often as possible. Just amazing cycling infrastructure and community there and great roads. If you haven't checked out our Taiwan playlist, go check it out. It's, again, one of my favorite series that we've done on this channel so far. <laughs> Ice cream to the face is definitely some good quarantine exercise. I've been doing a lot of that lately. From Andy, what advice would you give to someone who wants to get into racing? I would say my biggest advice, the first would be uh, set clear goals. 
So make sure why you want, you know why you want to get into racing, what your goals are. So is your goal, uh, you want to upgrade a category? Is your goal that you want to win a certain race? Define what your goals are. Uh, keep that in perspective and yeah, enjoy it. Try not to get uh, too serious, but it's good to stay focused and know what you're focused on. Oh, hey Cameron, thanks for the super chat. So discovering your channel got me back into cycling. I love watching your videos. Currently live in the UK, but looking to move to Japan after finishing university. Appreciate it, man. Japan's awesome. Come on over. I've heard some good things about the riding in the UK as well. I'd like to visit there myself one day. But yeah, good luck with uni. Uh, next question from Mark. Do you plan to remain in Asia forever or to ultimately raise your family back home in the US? This is another thing that we haven't fully decided right now. We're considering both options and honestly I don't know the right answer right now. But we are considering um, if we have kids to move back to the US for at least part of their education, maybe their elementary school or um, middle school, high school, I'm not sure, but I think at some point in their education, we'd like to come back to the US. Uh, this is both for uh, financial reasons and also for their educational purposes. If we have kids and we want them to have a English education, unfortunately, if we do that abroad, it's very expensive because we have to pay for international school and the tuition would probably be something we couldn't be able to afford, at least right now. So we're definitely keeping that route potentially open. Um, I'm not sure, honestly, what is the right answer. So we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens and think of what's best at the time, but it's definitely a consideration. Ideally, I'd like to be eventually in the financial position or have some sort of business where we make it part of the business to go back and forth between Asia and the US. So maybe if we, do really well with the cycling tourism company or something uh, we can find some opportunities to make that a reality but we'll see if things go really well we'd love to go back and forth as for the education well we'll have to see where we end up living and what education opportunities there are there so what schools there are uh, what are the costs not an easy answer And hello to Mr. Bike Lanes. We're at station 12 right now, almost halfway it seems. Man, this route is pretty long. From Eugenio, next comment. Have you ever had a tandem? It must be fun to ride. I've never owned a tandem of my own, but I have ridden some tandems before. And yeah, they're a blast. I've never ridden one in Japan, unfortunately, but I'd love to ride one with Tunchan one day and I think it'd be a good way for us to both enjoy riding a bit more and so that way she doesn't have to uh, keep up to my pace and we can both put in uh, what our relative effort and enjoy the ride a bit more so definitely something I want to try one day with her but unfortunately tandem bikes are mostly illegal in Japan but one day maybe in Vietnam oh wow thanks Mark thanks for the super chat Thanks for being you. <laughs> Appreciate it.
I actually, um, I haven't eaten breakfast yet today, so I'm getting a little bit low on energy, but it's, I've got my snack here. This is Anpan. I think I talk about this a lot in our videos. Um, people ask me what I eat during my rides, and this is one of the foods I eat the most often. It's kind of a, it's a regular bread, and inside there's some red beans, some sweet red beans. So it's high in protein, high in carbs, and just overall a really good snack. But man, this this ride's a little bit intense right now, so I don't actually think I want to eat this right now. But I've got that in the the backup corner, so in case we bonk anytime in the near future, I've got some snacks there. Oh, sorry, bike lanes. Missed bike lanes. I made an improper assumption. And from Jax, why is illegal, it illegal to ride a tandem bike in Japan? I think this rule actually depends on the prefecture you're in. So in Nagano Prefecture, it's supposedly legal, um, but most prefectures, it is illegal to ride a tandem bike. And this is because there's a rule that doesn't allow two people to ride on the same bike, uh, with the exception of kids. So if you have a kid on like a front basket or a rear basket, then it's okay, but it's not okay for two adults to be riding the same bike. And the reason for this is because uh, what's called futari nori. Futari nori means uh, two people riding. So there's kind of this, <laughs> Um, Japan has the monetary bikes, so the, the bikes with the racks on the back side. And there's this problem of like guys would be riding their monetary bikes and then they'd have their girlfriend sitting on the back and this would lead to a couple different accidents or something. So the police decided to crack down on this and they made some like ambiguous law, meaning like two people can't ride the same bike no matter what. Uh, so because they were trying to crack down on this, they ended up cracking down on everything and so that includes tandem bikes unfortunately and uh, they just haven't bothered to update the law unfortunately at least that's my interpretation of it if anybody knows uh, anything maybe more accurately related to that let me know but that's how I understand the story anyway oh man sweat mountain today Good way to start the day. Uh, thanks, JRK. Thanks for the super chat. Appreciate it. Uh, next question is from Calentino. Have you ever been to the Dominican Republic? No, unfortunately. The closest I've been has been uh, Puerto Rico, which is pretty close. I've trained there and raced there before, but unfortunately I was never able to make my way over to the Dominican Republic, but it's another place I'd like to go one day. Unfortunately, quite far from where we live now. From Jojo. Wanted to join your ride. Good thing I didn't. I wouldn't be able to keep up. And hope you get the prize wheels at the top. Oh, is there? Are there prize wheels for finishing the segment? I know that when you finish certain routes in Zwift, you can win some items. So that's pretty cool. So I, <laughs> I know that you get the you get the the Tron bike or the glowy bike when you climb a certain amount. So let's take a quick look. So this is the the climbing segment. You climb up like Mount Everest or something, but you have to climb more. And once you climb 50,000 meters, you can win the special Tron bike. So uh, that's one of my goals moving forward, but I'm only 30% of the way there right now. That's cool. So there's other items 
I might be winning a wheel set. That's cool to know. And thanks again, JRK. And from Brad, have you seen any light speed bikes in Japan? Titanium bikes were kind of a big deal 20 years ago. No, not really. I don't really see any light speed bikes in Japan. Uh, at least I haven't anyway in my area. And from Basti, which parts of Japan have you been cycling around? Honestly, I just mostly cycle around the area that I live in. So Japan is made up of a couple different islands. The main island is called Honshu and we live in the center of Honshu. So in Aichi Prefecture, Nagoya area. Most of my riding has been centered around this area. So uh, we've got Gifu to the north, Nagano to the north, and we've got Kansai, like Kyoto, Osaka, to the west. And I would say 99% of my riding in Japan has unfortunately been um, only in this area. So there's a lot of places in Japan that I haven't been able to ride a bike yet, and I really want to go. Uh, for example, Kyushu, Hokkaido, and yeah, just uh, Shikoku. These are the different islands of Japan. I'd love to ride there one day. I'd love to ride in Aomori, the northern point of Honshu. And this is kind of my dream one day to eventually be able to ride in these other areas in Japan. I was hoping to do this uh, before we left to go to Vietnam actually and travel a bit while we had the opportunity to before moving. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem like this is going to be uh, realistic anymore. It's just a little bit too risky to travel at this point. So we'll see, but hopefully um, we'll have some window of opportunity before we leave to move back to Vietnam uh, to travel around Japan a bit more. It'll be a lot harder to do once we leave and we're coming back as tourists, I'd imagine. Or maybe it'd be easier then, because when we come to Japan as tourists, we'd have the JR Pass. So uh, the JR Pass allows you to ride the Shinkansen a bullet train as much as possible, but you're not eligible to get it as a resident. But if you're a tourist, you can get it. So it might be cheaper in some ways to come to Japan as a tourist. From Snuggles. Yeah, titanium single speed sounds like a great bike. I've never ridden a titanium bike before, but I'm curious to see how it feels and always love a single speed. And from Johnny D. Wicked, if you could build your bike in any material, what would be your favorite bike material? Steel, aluminum, carbon, titanium, etc. Uh, like I just mentioned, I have never ridden a titanium bike, so I honestly don't know. I think I would prefer steel, uh, steel or aluminum. If it's a really good steel bike, then yeah, definitely steel would be a cool way to go. I've never had my own a very high-end steel bike before. I have my Schwinn Madison, which is a nice steel single speed, and I've had some, I've had really good experience with it, so I'd be curious what it's like to ride a nice high-end uh, sort of custom steel frame. Unfortunately, I've never had the honor of doing that before, so I'm not sure. Um, in terms of reliability and what I know, I, I know aluminum, I've ridden a lot of aluminum bikes, and so that's what I'm most comfortable with right now, but I am opening, open to trying uh, a custom steel bike or titanium bike. I'd really love to try that one day, actually. Carbon? Eh, carbon's a little bit scary. I like carbon if I'm like racing, and if that's my goal, then yeah, I'd love a carbon bike. If I have a team bike, and if I'm getting the bike from my team, that'd be great, but if I'm looking at it from a, a long-term investment, something that I want to use a long time, uh, to be more durable and reliable, I would uh, stay away from carbon personally. That's my choice though. Uh, but if you have the money, you don't need to worry about it. Carbon's definitely the way to go.
And from Basti, can you take the bike on the Shinkansen? Yeah, I've done it multiple times, but I think recently they were planning to increase the Shinkansen fees for bringing large items on the train, so you might have to pay extra money for it now. I'm not sure if they enacted that law now or not yet. Titanium feels like steel. That's what I hear. I'm really curious about that. <laughs> uh, man, Andy, you're asking a, a hard one. Do you find that doing videos about cycling is hard to make a living from? Uh, yes and no. I like making cycling videos. It's really fun. So from a passion standpoint, I really enjoy this kind of work. I love documenting our rides. I love making videos about cycling. Um, it's very enjoyable. So it's not something I feel like I would ever really get tired of doing. But from the financial aspect, unfortunately, uh, cycling videos, especially ride videos, they don't generally uh, do very well in terms of search results and popularity, I guess. So for example, if I ride to some obscure location in Japan, I have to title the video in a way that appeals to a lot of people. But if I, I say the actual name in Japanese, um, it's not something that's gonna show up in search results. So I do find it a little bit difficult to grow a cycling channel when you focus on just regular uh, ride videos in Japan. But so I feel like you have to compromise and make more general videos like uh, beginner advice videos or cycling tips videos. And those videos aren't always things that I'm as passionate about making, but so I think there are some difficulties in making videos about cycling and making a, a living from it. But once you build up a decent audience, it gets easier and easier. Um, but I don't know, I really enjoy making cycling videos. Uh, there are some industries that make a lot more money. So the cycling industry, the ad rates are really low. But if you make a, a video about some other industry, like for example, one of my friends, he does a, a channel about Tesla. Those ad rates are a lot higher. It's more high tech, high income kind of industry. So uh, it's kind of a mix of good and bad things. Cycling, of course, is my passion. So it's something I can talk about a lot and never get tired of doing, but the ad rates are definitely a lot lower than other industries. So if your goal is to be like a full-time YouTuber, some other industries would be a lot easier for sure um, for making more money per view. And from Bike Lanes, thank you for getting me through this quarantine. I'm so grateful for all your videos because they've inspired me to commute by bicycle. Man, that's awesome. I'm really glad to hear that. And I love seeing these kinds of messages, seeing that the videos help uh, motivate people to get out on their bikes. So that's awesome. Keep it up. Enjoy the ride. Oh, hey, Philip. Welcome. So, Philip, I met someone back in October in Japan that was riding around all of Japan. He said he was from Nagoya. He said he just got out of university. And what's worse to you, uphill, headwind, or both? That's pretty cool. I've always wanted to do that, a cycle tour around Japan. It's been one of my goals that I've sort of put off because I always had an excuse, like I didn't have enough money, uh, I had work to do, and now uh, <laughs> I don't have work. I just make these videos, so it'd be a good opportunity, but unfortunately it's just a little bit too risky to travel right now. Uh, what's worse for me, uphill or headwind or both? Hmm. It depends. I would say that the headwind is worse because at least with an uphill, you have a downhill to look forward to uh, with a headwind, I guess you have a tailwind to look forward to potentially, but hmm, I will, I'll give a, a, tr a trick answer. I'll say a crosswind in a race. A crosswind in a race is uh, just brutal. Like, you have no place to hide and you got to stay with the front pack and you don't really get any draft. So uh, on a solo ride, I don't really mind either. I'm pretty comfortable in a headwind because I've got a bit of a heavier build. so. It doesn't really bother me so much. I'm definitely weaker in a longer uphill, so let's let's say uphill then. If it's a short uphill, then yeah, no problem. 
But if it's a long uphill we're talking about, then sure, yeah, that's the worst. And from Daniel, hey man, I like all your content. And when is the next Zwift ride? I don't have a set schedule yet, but I'm definitely thinking about doing some sort of maybe group ride on Zwift. It's a bit hard to do both the, the group ride and live stream at the same time, because there's two screens to look at, but definitely we can try and organize some sort of group rides. Maybe I'll post my, my Zwift schedule. Um, if I do that though, I'll probably do it on Facebook. So. Uh, be sure to follow our Facebook page, and I'll make the announcements there. It's easiest way to communicate. So stay, uh, stay following on that page, and I'll make an announcement there if I ever do any public rides like this. All right, one hour in so far. How much further we got? We're in segment six. Six more to go. All right, not too much further. Some tents on the course. Man, I've never done winter camping like this before, but it does not look fun. Oh, well, thanks, Johnny. Thanks for the super chat. <laughs> Appreciate it. Man, Johnny's already one of our patrons, but geez, thanks so much for the support. <laughs> and from Farseed, how about food travel industry paired with riding? Does that improve the money making potential? Um, if you're sponsored, then yeah. It can help. A sponsorship makes a big deal. The problem with getting sponsored though is you really need to have a, a focused niche. So it makes sense for the companies who are willing to sponsor you. So the unfortunate thing with mixing cycling with something else is it spreads your audience. So some people maybe are just interested in the cycling videos. Some people are maybe just interested in the food videos. And so if you start splitting your audience like that, for example, I upload a new video about food, maybe my cycling audience isn't interested in that. So it signals to YouTube that uh, my audience doesn't like my videos. So it really helps to stay specific in one niche. And that makes me you more appealing to advertisers. So that's the unfortunate reality. It is hard to monetize uh, that kind of channel. But it's more fun personally, of course, to, to spread out and try different things. And Tunchan, my wife loves of course, it, eating food, and we like to mix it in in the channel naturally, but unfortunately, it doesn't really help with the, the money-making potential unless we find some sort of uh, food restaurant or company that's willing to help sponsor or support a video or the channel. And that's where our supporters in Patreon, like Johnny here, uh, that just, it's really helped us uh, ease... ended up not owing any money on my taxes so I didn't give my bank information but so I don't qualify for the automatic direct deposit and I haven't filed my 2019 taxes yet I'm working on filing that now uh, it's tough in Japan because you have to mail it in but now they're telling you you have to file your taxes online but because my wife is not an American citizen I'm having issues because she's a, a non-registered alien and because of that, I'm not able to file my taxes online. It's giving me some sort of error. And so I need to mail that in. And hopefully after that's all done, we'll be able to get the stimulus check. And supposedly, we'll also be eligible for the stimulus check here in Japan, where they're giving about $1,000 per person. So um, ideally, if everything works out, we'll be getting a stimulus check from the US government um, just for me, because she's not an American citizen. And then we'll be getting the stimulus check in Japan for $1,000 each. Uh, so we could potentially have 
$3,000 coming in, which would be uh, extremely helpful. But it's all, it's all up in the air right now. We don't know if that's actually going to come. But we're crossing our fingers. So yeah, Johnny, uh, to answer your question, Japan is recently announced that they're giving $1,000 or 100,000 yen to each resident adult in Japan. So not just Japanese citizens, but supposedly also foreigners who are living and working in Japan on a residence visa. So uh, we should both qualify for that, supposedly, but we haven't gotten any paperwork or anything that's arrived to confirm that yet. So. I'm not, I'm holding my breath for now. And hey, Dirty Tesla, welcome and congrats to you on your 20K subs. So Dirty Tesla is my bro from Detroit. If you're interested in Tesla related information, he has a great channel and he also has a very dirty Tesla. <laughs> cool guy though, go check him out. And sorry, I can't pronounce your first name, but I'll call you Mr. Chow. How about a separate channel for travel and food in Vietnam? Uh, that is another consideration right now. We're maybe gonna keep Tubal Cruise focused on cycling. So if there's any videos that mix cycling and riding to different, eating different foods, we'll of course keep that on Tubal Cruise. But I think we're also gonna make a separate channel focused on life in, Japan, in Vietnam in general and keep that channel dedicated to that. But these are other things that we need to um, make a decision about. But from an advertising standpoint, it makes the most sense to, to split it. But we have gotten a lot of comments from you guys telling us that you prefer to have everything on the same channel. So it's a tough choice because uh, financially wise, it's a better choice to split the channel. Uh, but most of the fans prefer us to keep everything on the same channel. So. We're not sure what is the right way to go, but long term, of course, uh, we need to make money to support ourselves. So unfortunately, we might need to go that route. But at the same time, it's also important to uh, follow your guys' opinions and help get you guys what you think is best. So we're not sure. But for now, we're going to stay on just two crews, see how it goes. But if it's obviously clear that the best thing to do is a split, we might do that at one point. <laughs> this looks hard. You should just sit on the couch. <laughs> so, Dirty Tesla is actually one of my childhood friends. And I'll say a funny story while we're on here is uh, I used to always try and get him to ride bikes with me. And we should, like, tell him, like, oh man, we should go for a bike ride or something. And just he was never the kind of guy that was really interested in working out, at least not cardio stuff. Like he enjoyed working out in the gym, doing like upper body kind of stuff, but uh, not endurance kind of stuff. And a couple years ago, he bought a mountain bike and started cycling. And I was so excited. And when I came back to the US the last time, we went on our first like real bike ride together. And that's just a great moment. Uh, there's an old vlog on my channel uh, somewhere of us cycling together. So you can check that out. But Unfortunately, now that he's bought his Tesla, he just sits on his butt all the day and is gaining weight, unfortunately. So I think you gotta get off your Tesla, bro, and start riding your bike more. Shots fired. And thanks, Kelvin. And for JRK, yeah, uh, regarding the stimulus check, as a foreigner living abroad, you have to always file your taxes in the US, unfortunately. So regardless, I have to um, submit that. And that's the way I can get them my bank information to submit the the transfer, the file transfer, or the, the money transfer. So either way, I have to get my tax return in.
And for LT, riding from Takayama to Tajimi, I think a lot of these roads can be very risky. Uh, they're sometimes very narrow and some really fast cars. So I think some of those main roads can be very, very dangerous. I would try and find some sort of local community that you can maybe ask for what specific roads are best. I unfortunately haven't ridden up in Takayama area, so, but I have heard there's some really good roads in that area, but also some really dangerous roads. So you might wanna try and ask someone who's more knowledgeable about what roads are best. <laughs> All right, nice job, Merrick. This is my first time doing this climb and it is kicking my butt. So props for finishing. From Mark, you're gonna miss the four seasons in Japan once you're in Vietnam. Definitely, uh, that's one thing that I'll be very sad to miss. I actually love having four seasons, but the good thing is we should be more free to travel. So hopefully we can travel to experience some of the seasons a bit. So in the winter, I definitely love to go to Northern Vietnam and see some of the snow-capped mountains. Um, maybe come back to Japan even. So, uh, but that is unfortunate that it's a bit harder. You won't be able to experience the full four seasons like you get to do in Japan. <laughs> so, Dirty Tesla, I hope this helps motivate you. Get back on your bike so when I come back to the US, we can go for another bike ride and make another vlog together. You gotta get back in shape. And from Johnny D, what's your favorite Vietnamese dish so far? By far, banh mi. I'm a sandwich kind of guy. Banh mi is the Vietnamese sandwich. They're only like a dollar. You can get them on any street corner and they are delicious. By far my favorite. From Merrick, come on, push some more watts. <laughs> Maybe in the last segment, what segment are we on right now? We're on segment three. Maybe a little bit, I'll go a little bit harder. <laughs> but then I won't be able to talk anymore. <laughs> All right, thanks, Dirty T. Thanks for the super chat and the dumbbell. <laughs> yeah, we gotta. I gotta work on my upper body too. So I do ride my bike quite a bit, but I'm ignoring my upper body lately. So maybe I'll do some push-ups after this for you. From Junior, yeah, this is my first Everest challenge I'm doing. This is my first time going up here. <laughs> 215 plus should be manageable. Well, here we are. We're 210 right now. All right, for you guys, let's push it. I'm not gonna be able to talk anymore, but here we go. We'll go over 300 for the for the rest. <laughs> hey, Trixie Bella, thanks for joining the chat. Thanks, Gunther. And from Ben, definitely, yeah, Singapore is another place we'd love to visit, and it's very nearby, so we'll definitely make our way over there. <laughs> All right, thanks, Dirty Tesla. See you later. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> From Gunther, come to the Swiss Hills. You will talk differently about mountains. I'd love to go one day. It looks beautiful. Uh, but I am not a hill climber by any means. Oh man, 300 watts and trying to talk at the same time is not easy. Why am I doing this? <laughs> Thanks, Mark.
climbed up 900 meters so far. Only gone about 16 kilometers. Whew. I love those messages on the side of the course. All right, let's, let's ease this down a little bit. I'm gonna blow up. <laughs> Thanks, CJB, for joining in. Uh, joining these Zwift chats is definitely a good way to help pass the time at work. Thanks, Gunther. We're almost near the top. No, uh, for JR to answer your question, I I didn't plot the course at all. I knew kind of like the, the total distance and elevation, but I've never ridden up here. I didn't really know anything about it other than that. So uh, no real planning in this. It's just something I've always wanted to try and decided to use today as the opportunity to do that. Gambare, thank you. Pass marker two. So what is this, the last marker? Whew. From Merrick, sub one hour. That's your goal for the last time. Yeah, what are we at right now? So 66 minutes right now, and that's mostly with a talking pace, I think. Yeah, if I go pretty hard, maybe we can go sub one hour one day. Might have to try that one day. Definitely need to train a little bit more though. And put the fan on a higher higher mode. Full, full power fan. This sweat is ridiculous. It's a good idea, Trixabel. Maybe we can do a, a Tubal Cruise fan race or something. <laughs> For Ganba, Ganba comes from the Japanese verb Ganbaru, which means uh, do your best. So it's kind of like a cheer, like go, go, you can do it. Uh, people will say Ganbatte. Like, please do your best. But the shorter version is just gamba. Like, you got this, you got it. It's kind of like, it's kind of like that. It looks like we're finishing segment one. Is this the end or does it continue on up here? These are some major satellites, geez. Or antennas. Uh, 
Is that technically the end of the climb? Or are we still climbing right now? That's cool. They got the the statue of those dudes up there. I think I can change the view so you guys can see. There we go. So you can change the angle of the camera on the game. Get some cool views. As always, the last part of the climb is the worst. You're just expecting it to be over, but it doesn't seem to want to end. Two hundred meters to go. One hundred. Uh. Is this it? Is this the goal? Uh. Is that the wheel? I got some gloves. It's all right. Too bad I never use gloves. <laughs> Oh. oh man, I'm cooked. So it was my time, 71 minutes. Yeah, I think. 60 minutes might be doable if I go serious, no talking. This is pretty cool. They have a flat part. They're not cool, but cruel. They've got this flat part up at the top of the course. Oh, wow. Check that out. That's a cool view. Dang. How ridiculous would this be if something like this existed in real life? Is that another bonus portal? I gotta get rid of my item. Oh no, it's not gonna make it. No! I want my bonus! Ah, oh, dang. Oh well. So what, we're coming back down now? One thousand meters of climbing. Nineteen kilometer ride, that's it, jeez. It's 
try some of the different angles going down. Oh, that's cool. Oh, this one's really cool. Did it give you the corners on the descents? Check that out. Let's leave this one on for a bit. So if there are any other questions you guys had, now is a good time while well, I catch my breath. Let's see. Hey, thanks Bradshaw. Thanks for the super chat. Sorry I missed it. I was in the zone from Bend, Oregon. Thanks again. Thanks for the super chat. From JR, I like how they put those time markers towards the end of the segment. Yeah, that was really cool. I really like the interface on this. It was really nice. From Basti, when I was in cycling in Saitama, I experienced some of the nicest drivers and never got yelled at. Yeah, the drivers in Japan usually are really nice. They'll never really be aggressive with you. Uh, Nagoya, I think is more aggressive than most places, but it's still not that bad, especially in comparison to the US. I've only had a couple handful of uh, negative encounters. Usually it's the taxi drivers that are the most aggressive, but most general drivers are pretty nice, pretty chill. Thanks Mark, JRK, Snuggles, Johnny D, THG, it's a cruise for you. It's a nice expression. Now change the challenge before you descend so you get the kilometers for other challenges. Is that a thing? Is there a descent challenge? From Philip, a noob question, what is the proper way to shift gears? I usually never change from the big ring on the front of my bike. Is that going to cause to wear out quicker? Uh, the, the easiest way to think about gears is you want your chain to be as straight as possible. So whether you're riding in the small ring or the big ring, it doesn't really matter so much as long as you keep your, your chain relatively straight. So for example, if you're in the small ring, you want to keep your rear gear more in one of the bigger gears. So that way it keeps this, the chain as straight as possible. But if you're going, if you're using more of the right side of your cassette, the smaller gears, you want to be more in your big ring. Uh, so the ideal thing is just keep a straight line. The more straight your chain is, the less wear there's going to be. Um, but if, for example, you ride a big gear on the rear derailleur, on the cassette, so the small part of the cassette, and you use your small ring, your chain is now diagonal. So that's going to cause more wear on the chain. So you want to try and keep your chain as straight as possible, and that will have the least amount of wear. And that's why single speed bikes generally last really long. The chains uh, don't have any diagonal pressure. So that's a good strategy, Merrick. I definitely want to use the downhill to get some more kilometers from the points. Uh, what other segments can you switch to on the descent? I'm still pretty new to all the segments here. And from Sabino, are you going to be doing more live stream? Uh, definitely, yeah. I want to do at least once a week on Tuesdays for sure. Uh, maybe twice a week if there's enough interest. Uh, maybe I'll try and do another time as well so we can help some people from other time zones uh, watch. I know this time zone is really difficult for Europe, so maybe we'll try some different time zones on some of the alternate days. But definitely, there's going to be some more live streams. Uh, maybe I'll live stream an event, so it won't be so much a Q&A, but maybe some of my regular rides and some of my training. That way you guys can see me suffer, I guess. Uh, but might as well, if I'm going to be riding anyway, if there's interest in the live streams. And from Trixie Bella, any training suggestions for those who have smaller lung capacity and extra pressure on their heart due to extreme uh, scoliosis? Uh, or scoliosis. Um, I hesitate to comment on this because it's not really my area of expertise and I don't want to give any uh, bad advice. So 
Yeah, sorry I can't be of help, but I don't want to give any advice that might not be accurate. It's best to probably ask someone who has a specialty knowledge in that. Okay, so the the downhill kilometers don't count towards a challenge, but that's okay. You still get the points for the downhill kilometers, right? So the points for every kilometer, what is it, 10 or 20 points? And this is, this is going to be a long descent. <laughs> Live stream a Zwift meetup. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely open to the idea. I just, I gotta figure out a good way to do that. Maybe we can keep a nice steady pace uh, so that way everyone can follow along comfortably. Maybe a flat course would be best. If there's any recommendations, let me know. We can try and make it happen. Oh man, look at that beautiful, is it a sunset or sunrise? Nice beautiful orange sun in the background. And from Mike, hello from Cleveland, Ohio. Do you have any fixes for front knee pain? Actually, I used to, I used to race for a team based out of Cleveland. I was on the Cleveland Clinic RGF cycling team a couple years back. So I've been there a couple times for uh, some racing and some events. To answer your question, it, I think it depends on the type of knee injury. I've had some knee pain before from sort of overtraining. Uh, going from not training very hard to a very strict training regimen after that and sort of over pushing it so I had some knee pain uh, in that sense and I think uh, it just really depends there's so many different types of knee injuries but one thing for sure is you definitely want to ease the stress that you put on your knee so maybe reducing your amount of ride time uh, increasing your cadence reducing the pressure that you're putting down on your knee as uh, there's different supplements you can use for example like what is it glucosamine chondritin that can help uh, with your tendons uh, but there's it just really depends there's a lot of different things it could be um, but generally some good advice is just reduce your amount of riding the amount of pressure you put on your knee try and give yourself some time to recover uh, get some more sleep and just regular common sense recovery stuff um, beyond that it might be a more severe issue and you might need to get some uh, specialty help with that And from Philip, speaking of aggressive drivers, I'm always worried someone road raging will hit me since I started riding mainly in the street, though I've only been hit on the sidewalk. Yeah, this is an unfortunate reality we cyclists have to deal with. And again, this depends on where you live. Uh, road rage isn't really that big of a thing here in Japan. Like, yeah, it still exists, but I feel a lot more scared with the road rage in like more Western countries like the US. Like. There's some drivers in the U.S. that just have a passionate hatred of cyclists and they'll like intentionally go out of their way to harm them. So unfortunately, those people do exist and uh, just it's best to be as you want to try and uh, minimize the situation. If any situation evolves as best as possible, uh, don't do anything that could possibly instigate some sort of incident or make someone angry. Like even if it's not your fault, uh, just yeah, try and be extra cautious about not making people angry. And even if you have the right of way, I generally always try to give the right of way or expect that the car is going to take the right of way away from me. Uh, so it's always best to try and expect and prepare for the worst when you ride. And that way you can help avoid some dangerous situations. Uh, the sidewalk is definitely more dangerous than the regular road. Uh, you can't, there's a lot of things you can't predict in the sidewalk. Cars will just come out of nowhere. They'll pull right in. Uh, so I think sidewalks give you a more sense of security when really they're way more dangerous. So yeah just we got to be careful it's risky but it is what it is
Well, while we're descending, I might as well eat my breakfast. Here we go. This is my anpan, my red bean bread. I've been looking forward to this all ride. And right on the top, we got some sesame seeds. Heaven, heaven in a bun. Mm. And inside, they've got the red bean. I get a lot of questions about this, but some of my favorite riding food here in Japan. Oh, is this it? We're at the bottom of the descent. All right. <laughs> I won't subject you guys to watching me eat breakfast, but I think we're gonna finish this ride here so let me get to the last few questions and we're gonna end this stream but let's see anything else in here all right last question from Mike hey Cruz can you recommend a good indoor trainer or do you have a video on the subject I made a video talking about uh, the indoor trainer for my wife for Tuntran. So if you search like, I think indoor trainer, uh, Tubo Cruz, that video should come up. But I think the indoor trainer is just whatever fits your budget. Anything will work. So if you're on a cheap budget, I would say find a used fluid trainer. You can find a used fluid trainer. Uh, you can usually get them for free if you have a good connection. Uh, people will usually just get rid of their old trainers. but. If you're trying to buy it used, you can usually find one for maybe 50 bucks. And fluid trainers last a long time. They're still a little bit loud, but they definitely give you the workout and they work. So I would say go that route. Um, even if you buy new, they're not too expensive. If you're looking for something a bit more expensive, um, you can get a smart trainer, a power trainer, and that way you can connect to Zwift more accurately but you'll definitely be spending a lot more money. You can get the drivetrain trainer, so it connects di directly to your chain. Um, those will be more accurate. And of course, you don't have any wear. You don't need any tires. You don't wear out your tires, uh, but they're definitely way more expensive. I use a spin bike, and spin bikes are great because there's no wear on your regular bikes. I can change the position so my wife and I can both use it freely, and it's super quiet but it takes up a lot of space. So, hope that answers your question. And from Philip, you didn't get any of the, the curry bread. Yeah, the curry bread in Japan can be really good, especially the fresh, freshly baked, like really good quality curry bread is so good. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today's live stream. Thanks, everyone, for joining. And thanks to everyone who helped support in the super chat. Very much appreciated in these times. And we hope you all stay safe and look forward to the next live stream. I'll be pasting the announcement on our Facebook page. So be sure to follow us on Facebook so you can get our announcements right away. And, yeah, stay safe, guys. We'll see you in the next stream.